Okay, Paul Salmon here. I'd like to discuss uh, a series of accidents that happened uh, all over a very short period of time. We had um, at various locations around the United States, there were four different accidents that occurred based on people getting way behind the power curve and uh, getting the uh, aircraft into the ground. I'm speaking of gyro planes specifically. And <clears throat> what getting behind the power curve means that there's a certain speed for each gyro plane that is the most efficient speed. And at that speed, it takes the least amount of power to maintain altitude. And for nearly all, all modern gyros, that speed is somewhere between 60 and 65. And we just call it 65 for the magnet. And so at 65, the amount of drag is, the, is least on the air, the total amount of drag is least on both the rotor and the body of the aircraft. And so that makes it the most efficient speed and takes the least amount of power to, to keep the aircraft at a level attitude, or I'm sorry, at a, at a level altitude. So as you raise the nose of the aircraft and you start slowing down, slower than 65, with, as you get slower and slower, it takes more and more power to maintain altitude to the point where you get to about 30, between 35 and 40, depending on whether you're in, on the aircraft by yourself or whether you've got two people in there and full of fuel, a little bit heavier, then the speed um, where it fails to be able to maintain altitude, even at full throttle, and again, it's based on also the amount of horsepower to you, uh, of about 40 miles an hour. You know, if you're flying a 915 with 141 horsepower, the, the speed that that thing would uh, continue to maintain altitude at would be considerably slower uh, because you have excess power available to you. It would be for say a 912 that only makes 100 horsepower. So <clears throat> we had a series of uh, four accidents that I was aware of, I actually witnessed one of them um, and uh, where the accidents were caused by people getting uh, way behind the power curve. And in each case, uh, I know three or four pilots I talked to that were flying the aircraft when it happened were all convinced that the engine was not making any, was, oh, that engine was just not making enough power, which is probably not true. The engines were probably all making power just fine. And I actually posted one video of uh, one gentleman that, that got behind the power curve and, and crashed the aircraft, and, and I'll review the video with you here. If you look at the first part of the video, when he accelerates, the aircraft rapidly accelerates and you'll see that he gets into the air in a very short distance. The problem is that when he gets it into the air in a very short distance, his, ground, his uh, air speed is fairly slow, probably only about 45 or 50 when he gets into the air. He immediately made a downwind turn, which sort of sealed his fate. Uh, <clears throat> as you study aerodynamics, you'll find out that in level flight, it takes one G of lift to support the weight of the aircraft. As you roll into a turn, when you get to a 30 degree turn, it's 1.4 Gs. So effectively, the aircraft weighs 40% more in a 30 uh, degree bank. When you get to a 60 degree bank, that's, two, that's a 2 G turn and the aircraft essentially weighs twice as much. It takes twice as much lift in a 60 degree bank to maintain altitude than it does in level wings. All right. So let's review, let's take a quick look at the um, uh, video here and then I'll come back with a few more comments. Okay, so I'd like to start off by saying that the gentleman that was in this particular accident did not get hurt. He literally walked away from it, some substantial damage to the aircraft, but he's just fine. Didn't get hurt at all. And usually, <clears throat> that's what happens. When you get behind the power curve, you're going so slow, you know, you auger the thing into the ground. A lot of time, most of, most of the time, people will walk away without an injury or a very slight injury. Gets a few cuts and bruises, that's about it because you're only going usually about you know 15 or 20 miles an hour when you impact the ground and uh, so it's a very uh, it's very likely that you're going to walk away with very very little injuries at all which brings me to what you should do if you find that you're behind the power curve and more importantly what you shouldn't do if you find yourself behind the power curve particularly on departure 
if you're taking off with the aircraft and you are behind the power curve and let's say that you thought your speed was pretty decent but you rolled into a turn and then you figure out that you're actually descending and you're not able to maintain altitude you have to immediately immediately level the wings on the aircraft if you go from that 60 degree bank that you rolled into and you level the wings it's just like producing having twice as much power available to you because essentially that aircraft weighs half as much in level wings as it does in a 60 degree bank so the first thing you got to do is level the wings all right level those wings and it works the same way in an airplane if you take off on an airplane and you start climbing out and you you uh, roll the thing into a significant bank and you find out that the aircraft is just not climbing then you should immediately level the wings level the wings on the aircraft and i think you'll find that the aircraft will actually start to climb when the case of the gyroplane, if you think that you're getting behind the power curve, you need to do two things. Number one, le if you're in a turn, level the wings. And the second thing that you need to do is get the nose down. If you get the nose down to just about level attitude on the aircraft, if you've gotten it into the air and you got behind the power curve, if you just lower the nose to level attitude on the aircraft, 99% of the time it's gonna maintain altitude. And once you hit level attitude like that, the aircraft will slowly increase its speed and start to climb out again. And typically that will keep you from impacting the ground. And uh, so the worst thing you could do, if you find that you're behind the power curve, the absolute worst thing you could do is, well, number one, don't lower the nose, and two, roll into a turn. If you roll into a turn, you just sealed your fate. It, things are not gonna get better. They're gonna get far worse, all right? So if you think you're getting behind the power curve, level the wings, lower the nose to level, level attitude on the aircraft, and that typically keeps you from impacting the ground. The aircraft will slowly accelerate and start to climb out. And uh, that should uh, very likely prevent the accident. So. so now when you lower your nose, you wanna just lower it to level attitude. Don't lower it down below level attitude because when you do that, you're gonna significantly increase your sink rate. Your speed will come up, but likely if you're low to the ground, you're gonna impact the ground before you ever get the uh, sink rate in check, all right? So when you lower that nose, you wanna lower it to just right at level attitude. Don't plunge the nose down suddenly, because again, you're gonna precipitate a huge altitude loss and you're gonna be right into the ground. Now, having said that, as long as you're not in a turn, as long as your wings are level, even if you did, if you screwed it up and you didn't quite get the uh, sink rate in check and you did actually touch down on the ground, as long as you're pointing straight ahead and there's something under you, say for instance a runway, to land on, likely it's just gonna bounce and it's gonna be likely a little bit ugly, but probably not even gonna do any damage to the aircraft, all right? So, and I'm gonna go out here in just a minute and I'll put the camera on board, I'll get it behind the power curve on takeoff. And, and by the way, don't practice this at home, okay? I'm gonna put the aircraft behind the power curve on takeoff, low level, and show you that you can recover it without impacting the ground. Again, don't try this at home, okay? If you wanna practice recovering from behind the power curve, get on up several hundred feet. Get up, you know, 800, 900,000 feet, and practice uh, getting the thing behind the power curve then bringing the nose down to level and convince yourself that the aircraft will climb out at full power, level attitude, that'll stop your sink rate and the aircraft will accelerate and climb out. I'm going to do this at about 15 to 20 feet off the ground. Do not practice this, all right? I'll demonstrate it just to show that it's absolutely possible, but don't try it yourself unless you want to risk a really ugly looking impact on the, uh, on the uh, ground there. So I was at an air show, <clears throat> it's been several years ago now, but I was at an air show and there was a, a young guy on a, a uh, gyroplane, so a like Benson type gyroplane, and he was uh, basically what we do call hanging it from the prop. And unfortunately he was doing it at quite a low al altitude, so he had the nose way up on the aircraft, it was a full power, and you know, had it slowed down to you know, 30, 35 miles an hour, whatever it would take to maintain altitude. But he was doing this only at about 75 feet in the air, 50 to 75 feet in the air. If you do that and your engine quits at that point, 
it's going to be really ugly because you have to get the nose down to try to recover your airspeed and there's no way you're going to run out of altitude before you ever get your sink rate in control and you're going to hit hard and likely get hurt with that so i walked up to him and i was waiting until he took a break you know he's down on the ground and i walked up to him and told him hey you know sometime when you're up there you know hanging it on the prop like that you ought to go up you know three or four hundred feet 500 600 something like that you know just to make sure in case the engine quit, you know, and I guess he thought it, it wasn't any of my business to tell him that, and I think he told me to kiss his ass or whatever, and I'm like, you know, you don't have to prove it to me. I just go up sometime, go up five or 600 feet and do that same thing, hang it on the prop and get it slowed down where we're just barely maintaining altitude, and then chop the throttle and see how much, uh, how long it takes you to recover and see if it's possible to recover it in 75 to 100 feet. Well, this story continues. A couple years later, I was in another fly-in, and uh, the same guy walks up to me and said, uh, hey, I want to apologize to you. Uh, evidently, he went up and did that. He went up five or 600 feet, hanging it on the prop like that, chopped the throttle, and it scared the living hell out of him how much altitude he lost before he could recover the aircraft. So. Again, some of these things you don't want to, you know, don't get behind the power curve low to, low to the ground. If you're going to get behind the power curve, you want some altitude under you. And we will use getting behind the power curve to our advantage. When I was doing these videos showing you that you can um, steepen up your descent to come down to a lower altitude, we get way behind the power curve. Sometimes we'll go to essentially zero airspeed and the aircraft will be, be coming down at a pretty good clip, 1,500, 1,600 foot a minute descent rate. But we sometimes use that to our advantage. But you don't want to be getting behind the power curve low to the ground because you leave yourself without very many options at all if the engine quits. So especially if the engine quits. All right, so you guys be safe out there again. Uh, let's keep them on the good side of the power curve and uh, be careful out there.